we need to start out more sloppy in our art. And today I'm going to prove why. But before we get into this, we got to talk about what's out for watercolor in 2024. Number one, an obsession with the perfect paper paint and brushes, please. Number two, fear of wasting supplies. Number three, creative self-loathing. Cute setup over there. Does it make up for your lack of talent? Yeah, thanks for that. You should go check how many comments you got about your paints light fastness today. <laughs> really? Really? Number four, worrying about color mixing. Yeah, we're not gonna be color mixing in 2024. Now what's in for watercolor in 2024? Number one, muddy brushes, more joy. Number two, technique freedom. Number three, dirty water don't care. Number four, messy palettes. And last but certainly not least, number five, starting sloppy. We tend to worship color mixing, tidy palettes, and perfect supplies far too much for our own good. So today I'm going to usher in your watercolor redemption. Free spirited watercolor is a wise place to begin, even if your end game is realism. Yes, you do need to eventually take the time to learn the basics, to understand the rules, but, and this is a massive gargantuan but, you need to start sloppy. To prove my point today, because remember, I promised you, I promised you I was going to prove this point. I am going to paint sloppy. I am going to use muddy water. I am going to avoid mixing too much on the palette, all the things. So stick with me because this is about to get really interesting and of course messy. I mean sloppy. I mean, whatever, it's just gonna be a good time. Starting out today with some super random supplies. I've got these Inconic pens from Arteza, some Gen Crafts 100% cotton, which I actually purposely chose this paper because it's not my favorite. I actually prefer the other Gen Crafts that's not 100% cotton, but I wanted to start sloppy here today. So I'm going with things that I think might work against me a little bit. Yeah. I'm also using the Art for Joy's Sake palette, of course, spraying that bad boy down and just a bunch of my brushes. If you want more information on the supplies that I'm using, I'm gonna link everything below. Now notice, really important, my collapsible painter's pot is a holy hot mess. It is a hot mess. It is filled with muddy, muddy water. I've got some acrylic in there even that I used like a day ago. There's inks in there, which are gonna mess with kind of the transparency of my palette here today. So I got a lot of things going on in this muddy pot of water that are going to work against me, but let's see if I can make some successful art out of it. So I'm just using some basic, simple brush strokes, some down strokes, some up strokes with my number six cat's tongue. And I am rinsing my brush in the dirty water. So, I mean, how much is it really helping me? Uh, who knows? I am quote unquote mixing a little bit, just grabbing some dirty color from the mixing wells of my palette. And I love doing that. I very, very rarely, if ever, clean a palette. Okay, I shouldn't say if ever because I definitely cleaned a palette, but it is not something I do often. Maybe twice a year, I will clean off a section of a random palette that I'm using. Now, for those who are painting along with me today, let me explain how I'm making these flowers. Basically, just using a press, very little drag and lift, and my brush has a lot of dirty color on it, but what's happening are these really beautiful kind of happy accidents where it almost looks like I double loaded my brush. So the point here, friends, is to really make sure you start with dirty water. Just make dirty water in your painter's pot if you have to, like fake it, okay? And then pick up some just rando color from your dirty mixing wells and have at it. All right, grabbing my three quarter inch dagger. I wanna go big and I wanna add some greenery here. Just again, look at me. I am just messing up that mixing palette. Some press and lift, some press and drag down. Very, very light pressure on that brush. And I'm creating some stems. 
Just make sure that those stems are converging underneath that whole cluster of flowers at a single point. That'll give you a very natural feel, give you kind of a, a fan, like a spray-like feel for your bouquet. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this a bouquet. Again, I know I'm not supposed to be mixing, friends. I know that color mixing on the palette was one of my outs for 2024. But again, I am not mixing. I'm just using what I've got, using the dirty, dingy paint to see what can come of it. A lot of press, drag, and lift with my brush here. Press, drag, even a little bit of wiggle while I'm dragging. And that is gonna be a fantastic technique for you to accomplish these bigger leaves. You certainly don't need this brush to create these leaves, but it does make it a lot easier. So you might be wondering, if I'm not gonna mix on the palette, well, where am I gonna mix? And I'm a big fan of letting colors mingle and mix on the page. In fact, I have a whole video about it. Uh, it's pretty popular if you haven't seen it yet, I will link it below. And basically it's about letting colors just do what they're gonna do once they hit the page. Now, of course, we have to have parts of the page or areas of the page that are damp or wet for colors to kind of explode into one another. But if you've painted with watercolor for even an hour your entire life, you know that that happens pretty quickly. So I would challenge you, friends, in 2024 to mix less on the palette. Worry about recreating that perfect color that you happened to mix three months ago Instead, just see what happens on the paper when you grab paint straight from your pans or double load two colors straight from your pans and just let it go. Let it be free. Let it mingle. Let it dance on the page. I added a little spray or a vine or whatever you want to call it here of like dingy blue flowers. But can I just say that dingy is delightful? Find yourself some delightful dingy hanging out in the crevices of your palette. Oh my goodness. Gorgeous. It's honestly one of the things I love about my own palette. Yes, I know I'm fangirling on my own palette, but this palette, when you mix that creamy, like ivory buff titanium like color in with the blues and you mix that beautiful kind of seashell pink or peach with some of the other colors, you get some of the most delicious muted tones that still wash out very sheer. And I am just living there right now. Okay, so the next thing that is in for 2024, we gotta talk about this paint water again. Wait longer, wait longer to change your paint water. Don't be scared of cloudy, dingy, muddy looking paint water because what's waiting for you inside that paint container filled with that yucky water, what's waiting for you when you rinse your brush in that quote yucky water are some killer happy accidents. Don't believe me? I don't know, look close. Look at that left hand side, those two little leaves popping out there. It's like I quadruple loaded magic and just painted it out on the paper and some of that excitement on the paper there with those two leaves has to do with the fact that I am quote rinsing my brush with dingy water. I think it's important to recognize as a beginner or even someone who's been painting for a long time and feels just kind of underwhelmed with the journey. Starting sloppy is a way to just let your brain be free. What can happen with a new hobby or with a revisited hobby is that we just feel like we've got to get ourselves perfectly set up, perfectly prepared. We've got to learn, 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 learn before we are, quote, qualified to hit the paper with a brush. And I say, heck to the no, please don't go there. Go here first. Be a child again first. Let yourself run rampant with messes and getting paint on your hands. And yeah, do all that first. Because if you start the other way around, if you start structured instead of starting sloppy, I have found in my experience over the last 25 plus years of teaching that you get yourself really wound up inside and getting wound up inside and stressed and fearful is going to be a roadblock to your creative momentum. 
But when you start sloppy and allow yourself to be there, enjoy it, you sit in it, you revel in it, yeah, you're going to start your educational journey, the more structured part of your journey, that much more excited. Your frame of mind is going to be ready to be less fearful, even when you get into the tricky stuff of painting and watercolor. I feel like I need me a watercolor pulpit, but if you are hearing me, if you are feeling this and you're having some moments, some aha moments, can you give me a heck yes, an amen, and a hallelujah, or a I am here for it in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. And you know what else I would appreciate? I would appreciate a boop on this video. A boop is a like, friends, and it really helps me out because it's hard out here. It's hard out here in the YouTube's tundra where, you know, people finding you is hard to do. So your likes help others find this channel and join our lovely community. Did I just say the YouTube's tundra? I think I did, but I'm going to, I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to let that sit there because, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, friends, I'm pulling out these pens because I feel like throwing them in the mix. And there's some really interesting muted colors in this pen set. Again, supplies will be linked below. I am holding that pen perpendicular. And if you're wondering, because I didn't narrate exactly what I was doing during all of that leafy stuff going on at the bottom, third of the paper. If you're wondering how I accomplished that, I just continued with interesting, thoughtful press and lift marks, press drag and lift marks. I was varying the pressure on my brush. I did bring in a little bit of that liner brush, if you had noticed, but you could easily kind of leave that out and just add some of the veins in the leaves with pens like this. I don't know about you, but there is nothing muddy about this painting because muddy remembers like this negative connotation. I feel as if the colors here are just luscious and velvety. We've still got a lot of sheerness. I actually am thoroughly pleased with what I've been creating here. Let me know your thoughts though. Do you feel it's muddy? Do you feel like this is something you would want to accomplish? Do you feel inspired and empowered now to maybe paint with some muddy water and uh, see how it goes? Or are you on the other side of this fence? I gotta know. All right, now I want you to remember this. If you remember nothing from today except for this, here we are. Stop planning, start getting messy. Yes! Stop planning so much as a beginner. The planning is what bogs you down initially. There is a time and place for planning and structure and educating yourself on the rules. Absolutely. But it's not in the very beginning. So here she is, my 2024 watercolor mantra personified on paper. I feel no self-loathing. I feel no worry. I just feel invigorated and ready to paint again. You're really going to post that, aren't you?